So we think that the reason why the person came into the church is because of us. No. Jesus was going to bring the person in it anyhow. But he was going to bring it in without you having to error to bring the person in. Because the person's heart, obviously, was a tender heart from the beginning for the Lord. Am I making sense to you? So don't feel you have to compromise divine principle for Jesus to save an individual. It's just like Jesus being on the cross. Many people think that the Jews had to betray Jesus the way they did for him to be placed on the cross. No. That's God and Jesus' problem to find an alternative way uh, 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 for Jesus to have died for the sin of man without being betrayed by his children. Does that make sense? Yes, please. Um, Sister Evans said she just worked with a family. The husband used to be a Seventh-day Adventist, or is he currently? He's currently a Seventh-day Adventist, and he married outside of the faith, and within six months after marrying, the wife has just recently been baptized and have become a Seventh-day Adventist. Right. Here's what normally happens, just to give you some heads up. What normally happens is that these new believers, like for example, when you marry outside, the person that you marry, when they come in, they realized that you went outside of God's will. Once they begin to understand the word, and it makes it difficult for you to witness to them. And then here's another thing too that normally ends up happening. The person who came in behind normally become a stronger believer than the one who compromised. And the one who compromised tend to become a hindrance to the new believer many times because of the fact that the one who actually uh, came in later they're like oh I want to add here I want to add here they're like no 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 you don't have to do all that you don't have to do all that and the same shaky fate that the first person had in the beginning they'll have that consistently all through the relationship but now let me ask you a question can these relationships be salvaged in terms of a Christian walk. Most definitely. A perfect example is the story of David. When David set up his right hand man. To be slaughtered that he can have his wife. And then you see that the first child that David had. Died. Why did the child die? Because of the way that child was conceived. Now saints you may say. But brother Luke. What about you? You were conceived like David's child too? I said, yes. And many of us have been. But there are certain individuals that have certain relationships with God that understand God's will in a certain way that when they step out, there's a little bit more responsibility uh, uh, that are held to those individuals. That's why it says, you know, basically, basically, to the degree or to the level that you're at. You know, the accountability is held. It says, therefore to him that know it to do right and do it not to him it's sin. Individuals who have a greater understanding of God's will and go their separate ways are held at a higher standard than individuals who don't have a greater understanding. Am I making sense to you? However, look at David's situation. We saw that after David did what he did, he repented, didn't he? What happened to the next child? Who's the next child? That Solomon. And what the scripture says that God did what? He loved him. Come on now, saints, you didn't hear me. The second child that came out of that adulterous, murderous relationship, what did the Bible says? And God loved that child. So what does it say? It basically teaches us that even in error, if we come before a holy God and humble ourselves and ask for forgiveness, Jesus can take grapes or sour grapes and make good wine. Am I making sense here? He can take something that was bad and make it good. Now let me ask you a question. If someone has gone outside of the faith and marry and they realize that they have erred, should they then divorce? Oh no. 
Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, so I don't want people to think, oh, I met her out the faith. Like I was talking to a young lady the other day, and she married outside of the faith. And when she realized that she had married outside the faith, she actually went and had the marriage annulled. I'm like, what's that? You know, I said, you know, if you don't mind me asking, my dear, what is annulled? She's like, you know, it's just like it had never been. I said, what do you mean? You know, not that I didn't understand her because I went to a Catholic college myself. Not that I didn't understand her, but with God's children, there's no such word. Am I making sense to you? Saints, you'll be surprised. And here's what normally happens to If the parents do come in, guess who normally is lost? The kids. Kids are lost. The kids are lost. Many times, the kids are lost. You know, I remember I was working with this one young lady, and she just, she was a single mother. She wanted a man in her life for her son. Do you know what happened? She did find someone. And you know, what's the, you know what happened when she found this gentleman? This gentleman turned her child out. Come on, saints. You don't understand what I just said. What did I just say, saints? He actually turned the child out made the child perform homosexual act. And him and his buddies took advantage of the child. And later on, I was able to sit with this young lady, and the very desire she had turned out to be one of the bitterest uh, uh, items that have ever occurred in her life. So what are we saying? We're saying that it is best to let the Savior choose for us and and you'll find that you may have certain desires, certain needs, but it's best to just leave it alone. Leave it alone. You know, leave it alone. Do you know that the Lord does have someone for each one of us? There's some of us that, you know, maybe it's not the Lord's plan for you specifically to be married because he may have greater work for you. But for the others, he has someone specifically for you and I. And I'll tell you a story. I have a sister, twin sister to be exact, and one time I remember I was dating this young lady, um, and there was someone that she wanted to introduce me to, and I can't remember exactly the circumstances behind everything, but then maybe I think the girl that I was dating might not have been a Christian, or I, I don't remember. I was a Baptist at that time, oh, by the way, just to let you know, and the person I was dating, I don't remember what religious background they had, but um, the girl that my sister wanted to introduce me to was a Sabbath keeper. Not a Seventh-day Adventist Sabbath keeper, um, but a Sabbath keeper. And my sister said to me, she will not introduce the Sabbath keeper to me because of the fact I'm already involved in another situation. And she didn't want to lead God's daughter away. You know, which was a solid principle. You know, sometimes, wh why did I share that little snippet with you? Sometimes we hinder God from being able to bless us, Sister Kerr. Because while we're here playing around with someone in a frivolous relationship, there is the man or woman that God have right there waiting for us. But that man and woman cannot come into your life because you're currently involved in something right here. And if Jesus bring that Christ-like man or woman into the relationship, it may cause the salvation of one or two of the other individuals. So what happened with you delaying the blessing, the door opens up for the Lord to direct that person to another direction. And then you wonder why you're still single. The opportunity has been there. But because you were not available to receive the opportunity, it's like a plane coming into land at JFK. But all the, the stalls are filled with a, and guess what? The plane is running out of gas. So they have to reroute them, land at LaGuardia. Was it originally God's plan for the plane to land at LaGuardia? No, but the plane had to be diverted to LaGuardia because of circumstances at JFK. Are we making sense here, saints? This is a deep area when it comes to marriage. You know another thing too? 
what, what, what the marriage thing, and I don't want to spend too much time in it, but I want to tell you this. Sometimes in the church, God's children are so smart. Um, both single men and single women are divorced men and divorced women. What happened, they wait till the new believers come in who are not rooted and grounded yet in the faith. Because, see, think about it. If they go to somebody who's rooted and grounded, they're going to rebuke them. They're going to say, okay, let's talk. Are you married, single, with a divorce? Oh, you divorced? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. What was the grounds? And immediately they found you don't have any grounds, you know. And praise the Lord, my brothers. Go ahead and make things right to the Holy God. See you later. The person has to go. But you get that new person who is not grounded in faith, you know, and immediately they capture that young faith, that young person. Person doesn't, is not rooted yet, so wherever you bend the tree, it's like back home. If you want a tree to bend in a certain direction, bend it when it's young. And if you bend it when it's young, it will grow in the direction you want it to go. But if you wait until the tree is old and you try to bend it, what happened, Brother Errol? It break. So if you get the young tree, the young believer, when they first come in, you can bend them real quick. And many times we find that our um, individuals who are not eligible will get those young believers and try and direct them in a part of unrighteousness. And that is wrong. That causes sickness and disease. And you know what the sad part about it too? It does affect both the believer, the old believer, and the new believer when those stuff do happen. Um, okay. Let's go on here. Tell you another story about that marriage situation. Another thought came to me. I want to add one more thing to that. I remember another story. Gentleman used to be a Seventh-day Adventist and he had backslided. He was living with his girlfriend for about 16 years. They had a 16-year-old daughter. And um, he came down with cancer and diabetes. He came to one of the lectures that we were having, just like we're having here. And after he came to the lecture, um, he invited me to come to his home to answer some questions about his ailment. And he says, Brother Luke, I have a question for you. Could you please tell me why I am sick? You know, I said, well, you know, uh, Brother so-and-so, I can't give you all of the details or tell you all of the reasons why you're sick, but there are a few things that I do see that I can share with you. Number one, um, there are things that you're doing that are contrary to the laws of health. That's number one. And number two, the young lady you're living with is not your wife. So here's what my recommendation is to you. My recommendation is to you, you know, you, because they own the home together. I said, there's enough rooms in the house. You go to one room, she goes to one room. Don't look upon each other in a naked state until you guys come to a conclusion. And once you come to a con conclusion, you need to make up your mind what you guys are going to do. Well, here's what happened. I had to leave on a mission trip. I left on the trip and I came back. I got a call, Brother Luke, come quickly. I got my wife and my wife and I head over to the home. When we head over to the home, there was a for sale sign right there. I tapped my wife, I said, honey, this is not good news. As I shared that with her, that it's not good news, um, we went up to the door, we knocked on the door. She says, Brother Luke, come on in. I have some bad news I want to share with you, but I didn't want to share it with you over the phone. So as we sat down, she said to me, Brother Luke, she said, Brother Luke, you know, shortly after you left, my boyfriend and I decided to get married. See, saints, people are looking for the truth. They got married. And she says, within 30 days after they marry, he went in to have his dialysis treatment, you know, on a weekly basis, like how he was doing it three times a week. And while on the dialysis table, he died on the table. And she said to me, she says, Brother Luke, tell me this. After all these years, after we how come after we decided to do things right that my husband died? after we made the right decision. And I said to her, I said, you know, my dear sister, it is very likely he was going to die. But the difference is, is that this time he died in Jesus. And I said to her, I said, my dear sister, if you are faithful, oh, come on, saints, you didn't hear me today. I said, if you are faithful, 
on resurrection day when Jesus come in all of his glory